This is vlog number six, all about recover and how to get back to playing after this crazy COVID time that we've just had. So this one is all about fingers. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we're holding our instrument properly. Again, talked about this before, we're looking for a nice straight arm. We're looking for a nice straight arm there as well. If we play like this, this old fashioned style of playing, we are hooking the tendons and we're kind of really pulling on them and creating so much tension because all these tendons get funneled through a little section here called the carpal tunnel. And when we start, the minute we kind of bend everything up at this end, it just puts an, an, a huge amount of pressure on that. Now you combine that with a little flip of the wrist like that, it's just gonna be nasty and it, that, that hurt. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be sore. So we need to look at straight arm down here and we need to look at keeping this as straight as possible. Again, what I tend to use and recommend is it's that third finger, it's the line of my third finger to go on the buttons. So that's how I play. And I find that the comfiest and most natural way of playing. Old fashioned teachers will probably tell you something totally different, play like this, get your fingers so you can be nice and precise and get them valves down. But simply, if you wanna get the valves down, just tip the trumpet that way. So tip the trumpet that way, get everything. You can see out nice straight lines and physically that's the best way to approach it. So finger exercises. These differ from the last couple of weeks that we've had where we've talked about brass gym and going, you know, we've been working down a pattern. I have just got one exercise for this and it's called the finger twister. Now there is a lot of variations you can do on this one. Really simply, we use three notes. We use D, E and F sharp. So we're going to play the E on third button instead of one and two. Let's put them together. So we go. Now, the next one we can do, put everything back to normal. D, E, F sharp, we're gonna play on all three. And then we're gonna do the E on three and the F sharp on all three, so we get. Now the tuning is pretty terrible, but it's a really good brain exercise. It's not an exercise about the fingers. The fingers can look after themselves when the, the body's in the position where it's relaxed and flowing and free. That's gonna work, that's gonna happen and it's gonna be fine. It's our brain. So this is a great brain exercise. So we're gonna take each of the patterns and we're gonna play through them, changing the combination each time. So we get. And see how many times we can do that. Honestly, the worst thing you can do is be thinking, what buttons am I doing now? The best thing you can be doing is thinking, I'm letting air flow through the instrument. I can feel the air moving and just let your brain do its work itself. To extend that one, we can try that quietly. We can try it tongued, we can try it slurred, we can try it fast, we can try it slow. We can try them backwards. Da, 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 da. Um, there's a lot of combinations. We could do two of one set of fingers and we could do two of another set of fingers. We can, any combination just to confuse your brain and to tax you and challenge you and push you is gonna help you move forward quicker. So we're gonna turn one and two, the E, into third. Ah! <sighs> one, two, three. So 